so thankful for all of you here today have not heard anything about our building uh, but it's we're right on right on par they say it's going to take a couple weeks to get those signatures from those in the high uh, positions of this company but if you would stand with me and i want us to pray for god's will to be done in the purchase of our new building obviously uh, this isn't our home if you don't know we're leasing this uh, but we're looking to buy a building i want us just together praying together that god's will will be done in this building amen the one we're looking at to buy can we pray that right now father lord we pray that your will be done in the purchase of a new building i pray that god that if it is your will that everything perfectly everything would happen perfectly that god that you'd open the doors that need to be open that you'd shut the doors that need to be shut we're believing that god that you are you are directing our path Lord, everything that needs to happen, financing and so forth, let it all take place. Let it be a simple process in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Would you greet somebody next to you? Would tell somebody it's good to see them? Shake somebody's hand. High five somebody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be in his presence. Praise God. Good to feel the presence of the Lord praise God praise God I've said it many times and I have no problem saying it over and over again Christians ought to be the friendliest people on the face of the earth right Christians that's you and I that's you and I we ought to be the friendliest people on the face of the earth people ought to meet us and say, I want to be like that person. I want to, they're so kind, they're so loving, they're so caring, they're so genuine, they're so real. That's what I want to be. I want to be like Jesus Christ, amen? Praise God. You heard that little story, I've shared it before, that there was a guy named Bob, and he worked a job like many of us do, and uh, he was a Christian, he was a great guy. And uh, he witnessed to people, and you've heard me say this, always be a witness, and when necessary, use words. It's our actions that people are looking at more so than the words that we declare. But this person watched Bob all the time. And this person ended up coming to church with Bob, and Bob was sitting in the pew next to him. Well, the preacher gave the altar call, you know, he said, if anybody wants to, to know Jesus, come forward. And this gentleman came forward and people began to hear him say some things. And what he was saying is, I want to be like Bob. I want to be like Bob. I want to be like Bob. And what a great, great testimony of the life that Bob lived. Amen. Bob was a Christian. He was one that surrendered his life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that guest, that friend of Bob, wanted to be like him. And man, let that be said of all of us, right? I want to be like Les. I want to be like Les Schultz. I want to be like Sam. I want to be like Tim and Kathy and, and Brad. Amen? Praise God. I want to be a great represent, representation of what Jesus Christ is. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, we're going to project it on the back wall. We all could, or should, maybe, I don't want to put too much pressure on, pressure on you, but we probably have this passage memorized. You see it at football games on poster boards. Yeah, John 3.16. I'm going to, I'm going to use that passage for my text today. If you want to turn to John 3.16, or if you just want to put your smartphone down because you're already smart in this verse. You know, you got this one, you got this one memorized, but this is the scripture. It says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. What a great, great passage. Amen. And there wasn't any pigskin thrown here today. Amen. 
Praise God. If, you, if this is your first time in a service like this, you know, I, I like to talk to people when I uh, hear or see that it might be their very first time in a Pentecostal church because it's very easy, they, very easily they can think that we're crazy. But I like to use that example. Have you ever been to a football game? I mean, this is, I, this is a true story. I've only been to one actually preseason Packer football game. And when I went, I literally cried. You're saying, well, what a little sissy. No, I cried because I was taken in by all the emotion. Crazy people. You know, these were people that were ah, screaming and going crazy. High five. I got a touchdown. It was emotional. They were, they were beyond themselves. But it wasn't for God at all. It was for a, a football game. So I look out and I see all of us here today. Some of us have been delivered from drugs and alcohol, depression. We've been delivered from religion. Come on. We've been delivered today. We've got a reason to be happy. We've got a reason to get excited, amen? Praise God, praise God. I've already read my scripture. Let's pray. Let's ask God to have his way in the remaining portion of this service. Father, thank you today for what you're doing, what you're gonna do today. Thank you for every soul, every human being, every person here today, God. They belong to you and you died for them. And I pray that you can speak to the hearts and the minds of people today draw them near to you and everyone said in Jesus name amen you're welcome to be seated mommy mommy I'm thirsty I want a drink I have no idea what Liz is doing Liz we were supposed to wait until later for that I don't know what that is but I do feel like there's some static it's gone now Okay, very good. She's electrifying. She is, a, that's why Brett married her. Amen. She is electrifying. She's already married, guys. If you're single, stay away from Liz. So, Brett, Brett nagged her a long time ago, got her. Amen. She's already spoken for. Now, I got to start again. So, I don't know what was going on over here, but we'll try again. All right. Mommy! I'm thirsty. I want a drink. Susanna heard her daughter's pleas, but there was nothing that she could do. She and her four-year-old Ganae were trapped beneath tons of con collapsed concrete and steel. Beside them in the darkness lay the body of Susanna's sister-in-law, one of the 55,000 victims of the worst earthquake in the history of Soviet Armenia. Calamity never knocks before it enters, and this time it had torn down the door. Susanna had gone to her sister-in-law's house to try on a dress. It was December 7th, 1988. At 11.30 a.m., the earthquake hit at 11.41. She had just removed the dress and was clad in stockings and slip when the fifth floor apartment began to shake. Susanna grabbed her daughter, but had only taken a few short steps before the floor opened up and they tumbled in. Susanna and Gane fell into the basement with a nine-story apartment house crumbling around them. Mommy, I need a drink. I'm thirsty. Please give me something to drink. There was nothing for Susanna to give. She was trapped flat on her back. A concrete panel of 18 inches above her head and a crumbled up water pipe above her shoulder kept her from standing. Feeling around in the darkness, she found a 24-ounce jar of blackberry jam that had fallen into the basement. 
She gave the entire jar to her daughter to eat. It was gone by the second day. Mommy, I'm so thirsty. Susanna knew she would, she would die, but she wanted her daughter to live. She found a dress, perhaps the one that she had to try on that day, and she made a bed for her daughter. Though it was bitter cold, she took off her stockings and wrapped them tightly around the child to keep her warm. The two were trapped for eight days. Because the darkness, Susanna lost track of time. Because of the cold, she lost feeling in her fingers and toes. Because of her inability to move, she lost hope. She said, I was just waiting for death. She began to hallucinate. Her thoughts wandered. A merciful sleep occasionally freed her from the horror of her entombment. But the sleep would be brief. Something always awakened her. Mommy! Mommy, I'm thirsty! The only thing that Susanna could do was to find that jam jar and break it. Take the glass and cut her finger and give her own daughter her blood to drink. She knew that it would sustain her and give her daughter life until they could be found. And that is exactly what Susanna did. She cut her finger and her daughter sucked her blood from her finger. In a garden called Gethsemane, a man cried out, Take this cup from me! Take this cup from me! This cup is a cup of pain, a cup of suffering. But that man looked past the suffering. He looked past the pain and he cried out even louder, Not my will, but thine be done. You see, there was another who gave his blood to save the dying. And he is our Heavenly Father, and his name is Jesus today. Can we rejoice today that there was a man long ago that gave his blood to save the world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Beneath the rubble of a fallen world, he pierced his hands. In the wreckage of a collapsed humanity, he ripped open his side. His children were trapped, so he gave his blood. His blood was all he had, but his blood was all it took today. He drank the cup of pain. He drank the cup of suffering and death for your salvation, for my salvation. Jesus, amen, we know about Jesus. He lived to die. Amen. He came here. The Bible said that he was begotten. The Bible says God robed himself in flesh. He was born of a woman. Jesus Christ came. He lived to die for the sins of mankind, for your sins, for my sins, for my transgressions. Everybody take your finger and point your finger at your chest. Yes, he died for you 2,000 years ago. Jesus died for the sins of mankind. All it took was one little tiny drop of the blood of God, amen, to forgive every living soul that would ever live on the face of the earth. That is how powerful our God is. He drank the cup of pain. He drank the cup of suffering and death for our salvation, for our forgiveness of sins, and for hope. That's right. Hope of a new life in Him. In the book of Romans, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That tells us that you and I, every person in here is a sinner. 
We needed salvation, and salvation could only come through God. Salvation could only come through the Son of God. Amen. Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Aren't you glad it doesn't stop there? For the wages of sin is death. But it says, The gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As I've stated, God robed himself in flesh. He became sin for us. The Bible says he took our sins, amen, and nailed them to the cross so that you and I could be free, amen, once and for all. What Jesus did over 2,000 years ago, amen, he sealed it. He, it was significant. He died for the sins of the world so that you and I could be free today, so that you and I could acknowledge what he did and walk a new path. In him, he started it over, so to say. He erased the board, right? He cleared the path. He secured your future. I read Hebrews chapter 10, a little bit of a lengthy passage, but I think it says so much. We understand the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the word, the word testament means covenant, The old covenant that God had with his people in the Old Testament between Genesis. Amen. Amen. That old old covenant that they had to sacrifice animals so their sins could be pushed ahead. Here we read in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. It says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world... He saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written in me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein, which are covered by the law. Now watch, verse 9 and 10. But then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He, he done away with the Old Testament, uh, a sacrifice of animals. And then verse 10 says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You see, everyone needs the blood of Jesus Christ. For it is only the blood of Jesus that forgives sins and that can save a man or save a woman today. Because of Calvary, because of God's love, you and I and every willing sinner can be freed from the sin and the life of bondage. You see, for sin entraps. And many today... We may not be able to hear them, but many today are crying aloud, I'm thirsty, give me drink. I'm thirsty, give me drink. Men and women by the thousands, by the hundred thousands, live as if there has been a great earthquake in their life and they are pinned down and cannot escape their plight. Just like Susanna and Gene, they are pinned down by sins. They are pinned down under the rubble of this life. They're pinned down by drugs, alcohol, depression, anxiety, worry, the darkness of tradition, of lostness, of loneliness. The darkness of religion has them bound. Too many folks today are misguided, lost, and in need of God to help them to intervene for their life. For they do not know Jesus Christ, but I'm here to declare, if they can, if they will, but cry, I'm thirsty, give me drink. The Bible says that God is our heavenly Father. If there's somebody here that realizes that they need God, you realize that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What needs to happen today is is that you need to recognize where you're at 
and cry out to God. He is our Heavenly Father. Cry out to Him and say, Daddy, I'm thirsty. God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Here I am with the world, with things, the rubble of this world, the darkness of this world collapsed all around me. Jesus will hear your cry. He will hear them and free them if they would but simply believe. He will come running to their side. He will set you free once and for all. I've said it so many times before. Everyone has a God-shaped hole in their heart. Everyone has a God-shaped hole in their heart that only God can fill. They're trying to fill that God-shaped hole with everything but God. This world and everything in it will never satisfy our soul's longing like Jesus can. I'm here to tell somebody that Jesus will meet you at the point of your need. I don't know what it is that you might be struggling with today. I don't know. You may, I mean, God, I believe that God is at work in every person's life. The Bible says that no man, no woman can be saved unless the Spirit of God is drawing that person. It's not by luck or chance that you're here today. God is reaching for you. Uh, he wants relationship with you. Uh, he wants you to trust Him. He wants you to put your faith in Him. Uh, he wants you to walk with Him step for step. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know what it is that you're trying to put in that God-shaped hole. I don't know if it's relationships. I don't know if it's alcohol or drugs. I don't know if it's religion. I don't know what it is. If it's your job, if it's a hobby, if it's just fun stuff, I don't know what it is. But hear me, hear this preacher today. You will never put anything in that God-shaped hole but God. There's something in every one of us here today. Amen. We were made to worship God. We were made to magnify Him. Why are you so important? Why is it that you're struggling? Why is it that it's so important? Because God loves you so much. He purchased you and I with his very own blood. The enemy of our soul. Uh, the devil would love nothing more than to deceive you to think. For you to, and I to think that we're, we're okay right where we're at. But we're not. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. We can't love this world. We gotta turn our affections toward God. We gotta realize that we are sinners and in need of His salvation, in need of His relationship. The world and things are crumbled all around us. This Susanna and Gene had to face the concrete and water pipes. All they had was jam. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the answer for the world today. No matter what you're facing, Jesus is the answer. He will meet you at the point of your need. If you and I can only believe we were created to live and serve and worship him. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, God will run to our rescue. He will begin to dig you and I free from all of our surroundings that have us bound or enslaved. I'm here to tell somebody, this is the voice of God for you today. We can no longer disregard the message. We can no longer put it aside. None of us are promised tomorrow. We are not promised that we will see another day. It's important. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. We don't want to put it off any longer. We want to make that connection today with the living God. We want to make that connection today before we leave and say, I don't want to leave without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hear me, folks. If we believe and accept what Jesus did at Calvary, if we would but acknowledge our need for him and realize that we are sinners and in need of his blood to cover us and free us from our sins, amen, and free us from ourselves, 
I'm telling you, God will do something supernatural in your life. Amen. He will open up things in your life that you never dream that he could open up. Amen. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and goodness and gentleness and faith and meekness and temperance and long-suffering. Hear me. God wants to, he wants to, he wants to disperse uh, 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 anxiety and fear and depression. He wants to put hope in your life. The Bible says he who the Son has set free is free indeed. I want to be free. Amen. I want to be free once and for all. If we confess our sins, the Bible said he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is what Jesus does. And when he does what he does, he does it. No one could do it any better than him. He's the only one. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. No longer should you and I live under the, the weight of, of this world. No longer should you and I be imprisoned by the sins of this flesh. No longer should you and I live in darkness. Hear me. The Lord has already, Jesus has already died. He was buried and he resurrected. And that means that you and I can have the very same thing. We can have a resurrected life in him. I wonder today, is there anybody here Is there anyone here that feels the pressure of this world? Anyone here feels like uh, that that there's been an earthquake in your life and and you're, 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 you're deep down way under the rubble of this world? You it could be that it could be that you are you're imprisoned, maybe in your mind. Maybe you're imprisoned in your mind and, 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 and you're confused and you're bewildered. You don't know where to go. You, you could say, I have no faith in God. I'm here to tell you that God wants to do a miracle in your life. He wants you to make a decision to come to him. And God's going to begin to open up your mind. You're going to begin to see things and understand things like you've never understood them before. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. If you're here and you've been serving God for a while, perhaps you've been in the church for a long time, you need to remember that we are to live free from the bondage of the world and stay free from sin and stay free from darkness. We are to be dedicated and committed to the cause of of the cross. We are to advance the kingdom. Remember, I say it, religion doesn't save anybody. What does save you? A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He said that if you, you'll, you'll only be my son and daughter, he said, if you walk in the Spirit. That you and I are walking in the Spirit every day. That we are living for Him. That we are, that we are honoring Him. That we are dedicating our lives to Him every day. We don't get good to get God. We get God to get good. If we ever drift and lose faith, we need to get back to the basics and and get a hold of our faith. If we ever lose our faith, we got to get back to where we need to be. And we need to cry aloud again that we are thirsty. Thirsty and in need of the covering of his blood again in our lives so that we can stay free and we can stay close to Jesus Christ. The musicians would come this morning. We must stay thirsty for what Jesus Christ gives and will give as we prioritize him in our life. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 34, in verse 8, it says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Would you stand with me this morning? I know today, I know today that I'm, I'm speaking to very experienced believers And perhaps I'm speaking to people that have never been in a church service like this. The Bible says that God doesn't love any one of us here in here any more than the other. And God doesn't want anyone to perish, 
but he wants all to come to repentance. No matter how old you are or what background you have, if it's been a long time or perhaps never, that you met Jesus, that you have said the sinner's prayer, that you haven't gone before him and said, God, search me, oh God, know me. God, look into my life, look into my heart, look into my life and lifestyle. And God, search me. And God, I, wanna, I want you to know, God, that I am a sinner. I recognize what the scripture says. And God, I want you to forgive me of my sins. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I felt very impressed today, amen, to preach this message. Uh, there was a man that came to Jesus by night. His name was Nicodemus, and he said to Jesus, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said to him, what does that mean? Must I enter the second time into my mother's womb? No. He said, no, marvel not. I say unto you, you must be born again of water. What that is is being baptized in the water, going all the way under the water. The Bible says to be buried with him in baptism. And the Bible says to be born again of water and spirit. Amen. You must welcome him into your life. You must repent and say, God, I want your spirit in me. Uh, amen. And when people did that in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, 8, 10, and 19, when they repented, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came over them and they began to speak in another language. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. I wonder if there's somebody here you're sick and tired of living under the rubble of this world. You feel, a, you feel imprisoned, enslaved, a captive. You can't move to the right or the left. You're like a, a walking prisoner and you want to be free today. I'm here to tell you, taste and see that the Lord is good. All you have to do is say, I'm thirsty. God, give me drink. I'm thirsty today. Give me drink. This could be your very first time in a service like this. Or maybe this, you've been living for God for 20, 30, 40 years. Amen. I wonder if there's somebody here that would be willing to take a step forward today and say, God, I need to make, I need to make a commitment to you today. God, I need to make a, I need to make a, a I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. As we sing this, this song this morning, I open this altar for anyone and everyone that would like to come forward to draw near to God as we sing today. Hallelujah. I just want to speak God's to talking to somebody Jesus. right now. God's showing you the way Till every dark today. Starts to Is there somebody here that would like to say, God, here I am. Declare I'm going to take a step forward. God, I want to know you like the word has been revealed to me today. I surrender, God. I surrender today, God. I give you my life today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ today, touch every heart and every mind this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you got to do is raise your hands toward heaven. All you got to do is say, God, here I am. I surrender today, God. I want to know you. Lord, you said you'll meet me at the point of my need. Here I am. I need you today, God. That's right. There's people responding. Thank you for responding today. God's doing the work this morning. Hallelujah. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
sins, oh God. I want to be a person that honors you, that lives for you, that's dedicated to you, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God. Amen. Let me see the hands in this place that once you've given your life to Jesus Christ, everything began to make sense. Amen. He began to fill you with the joy and the peace and the kindness. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Our God is a, he's a life changer. Pray God. He's a miracle working God. Amen. You're right where you need to be today. Praise God. The beautiful thing is, is that you don't have to make this life change at church. Amen. I was talking to somebody this last week and they, they told me they literally got the Holy Ghost in the shower. Amen. They begin to read the scriptures and they begin to, for the very first time, speak in tongues in the shower. Do you know, I prayed somebody through the Holy Ghost at a Burger King. Amen. Praise God. You can take what you've learned home today. And you can begin to pray it, amen, and begin to live it out loud, amen, because he's not only your savior here, but he's your savior everywhere. God wants to give you hope, amen, and change your life and everyone, everyone's life around about you, amen? Praise God. We're so thankful that you're here, amen. Your Hope City Church, love on each other, tell somebody you love and appreciate them, amen. In a few moments, we're going to transition to lunch. Please stick around and enjoy the fellowship of God's people. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.